Welcome back. This is part two of what is the endocannabinoid system. So in the first part of this video, I went into explaining how I discovered this secret medical system that I was not thought about in medical school. And it's not because I went to a bad medical school, I went to a great medical school. And most of you know that a lot of doctors were not thought about this system. And there's a lot of politics around why that is, and I'm not gonna get into it too deep today, but just understand that some time ago, <laughs> there was this drug on war, or war on drug, <laughs> I should say, that kind of caused cannabis to be taken off of the copia of doctors. And what I mean is that at one point, doctors were actually prescribing cannabis as medicine for a ton of different ailments. And we found out later that the reason why this stopped was because this medicine was taken off of the pharmacopoeia and doctors were getting persecuted for prescribing this treatment. Doctors used to use it to treat nausea, treat anxiety, treat uh, gastrointestinal discomfort, endocrine imbalances, any type of imbalance in the body. In fact, doctors were prescribing cannabis for these different ailments. But once it got to the point where doctors were losing their licenses and being persecuted and all this stuff, a lot of doctors shied away from it and then moved into what the new propaganda was, which was prescribe the pharmaceuticals to replace a lot of these ailments. Now think about it. If cannabis can treat multiple different conditions or at least help multiple different conditions, it was going to be a lot more cost effective, right? Because I can give a patient that has anxiety, trouble sleeping, poor appetite, just the cannabis to treat those three things. Whereas if I'm gonna treat them conventionally, I'm gonna pres pre uh, prescribe an anti-nausea for the nausea, I'm gonna prescribe a sleep aid for the sleep problems, and then I'm gonna prescribe something else for the appetite and so on, okay? So they will be on multiple drugs, which is great for, my, for the pharmaceutical company, but it's not great for the patient's pocket, right? So at the end of the day, there's some politics there, we're not gonna get into it. What I would say is if you wanna learn more about this, definitely click on the description in, in the free VIP group in the description below where we go into more details about this type of controversial stuff, okay? But anyway, the point is, endocannabinoid system has been in the human body from the get-go, okay? We've always had this system, and what we found out is that the body made its own cannabinoids, and we call those the endocannabinoids. And we touched on that in the previous video, one of them is called anandamide, for example. And it binds to these receptors, and these receptors on this endocannabinoid system affect multiple different things in different parts of the body to bring balance. So, how does the cannabis plant work? Well, the cannabis plant actually has cannabinoids. In fact, research continues to discover more. We know there's over 80, we believe maybe even 100 of them currently. So the cannabis plant, or some, some people call it hemp, some people call it cannabis, some people call it marijuana, this is a family of a plant that releases these ingredients or chemicals called cannabinoids. And cannabinoids actually bind to our own native endocannabinoid system. So it finds our CB1 receptor and our CB2 receptors and binds to it, and by binding to it, this plant is then able to do the function of our own natural anandamide, right, and 2-AG, okay? So when this happens, what happens? We are able to treat a ton of conditions. And this ranges from anxiety to seizures, to inflammation, to GI distress, to nausea, to, I mean, just name it, we're using cannabis in a lot of different ways to help patients. 
So, endocannabinoid system brings balance, but a lot of us have an endocannabinoid system that is not functioning great. Why? Because the things that makes us sick, the toxins, the wrong foods, the overly processed foods, the, the uh, preservatives, the obesity, all of that also affects our natural endocannabinoid system and deadens it, okay? So to improve our own natural endocannabinoid system, the same thing that we've been talking about on this channel over and over and over again, eating better, sleeping better, resting better, stressing less, all those things actually also enhance our endocannabinoid system so that it can function naturally. But when we add cannabis, we can actually enhance that system to do what it does, which is bringing balance back to our bodies, okay? So in the patient that has pain, it helps to reduce their pain. In the patient that can't sleep, it helps them to sleep. In the patients that have had trauma, it helps them deal with the trauma. In the patient that's anxious, it helps them to calm down. In the patient that's depressed, it brings their mood up. In the patient that's having seizures, it slows down that excessive brain activity. In that patient that's inflamed, it brings, it, it, it becomes an anti-inflammatory for that patient, and so on and so forth. And this is why this system is a secret that the medical system kept from doctors and of course from you, and now you're learning it. So you need to then learn more about it and you see how you can use this natural plant not in a psychoactive way but in a medicinal way to help heal and bring balance back to your body i'll see you on the next one bye for now